When I walked into the new customer's boiler room, the piping swayed back and forth and made a banging sound like someone was hitting the pipe with a hammer. It reminded me of steam hammer, but, but different. I shut off the boilers, but the banging kept going. I found the pump disconnects and shut them off. The noise and swaying stopped. Welcome, friends, to Boiler Room Detective Channel. I'm your host, Ray Wolfart. Today, we're discussing hydronic boilers, pressure reducing, or fill valve. Whether you're a seasoned professional or a newbie, I hope you learned something new from this video. The pressure was zero on the PTA gauge. The system is out of water. Where did it go? Looking around the boiler room didn't answer the question. My next step was to look at the system pressure reducing valve, or PRV. It's sometimes called a fill valve. The manual ball valves were open on both sides of the PRV, so the fill valve was either defective or misadjusted. I loosened the nut, holding the adjustment screw in place, and turned the screw clockwise one revolution. I couldn't feel water moving. I turned the screw back to the original position. The next step was to close the manual ball valves on both sides of the PRV. I unscrewed the built-in strainer and removed the screen. Opening and closing the upstream valve confirmed there was water there. The screen was plug solid. Taking it to the slop sink, I rinsed the screen and removed the junk. Normally the screen disintegrates. After reinstalling the screen and opening the valves, the PRV valve started feeding water into the system. Being an impatient person, I opened a bypass valve. When the system pressure reached 11 PSI, I shut off the bypass and watched the PTA gauge to make sure it didn't keep rising past the 12 PSI set point. 12 PSI is standard for a two-story building. The way I check to see if the PRV is feeding water is to feel the pipe downstream of the fill valve. If the pipe feels cool, it's still filling. I may also hold a screwdriver up to the pipe and listen for water flowing. Once I felt comfortable the system was stopped, I tightened the nut on the adjustment screw so it would stay at the set point. After starting the pumps and then the boilers, the swaying and banging were gone, but the air in the piping was noisy. This was expected as the pipes were nearly empty and filled with air. The air removal fitting hissed like a scared cat. Why was the system out of water? For the screen to be plugged, the system had to have been making up water for a while. Looking around the boiler room again, I found the cause. An automatic air vent was leaking water and going down the drain. It didn't leak when the water level was low, but now it did. I valved off the pipe feeding the air vent and made a note about getting a replacement. The following are some things I learned about pressure reducing valves for a hydronic system. Number one, never fill a hot boiler with cold water. This could damage the boiler and might injure you. I like connecting the boiler and water heater drain valves using a long washing machine hose if it's a residential boiler. I use the hot water from the water heater to fill the boiler. When the pressure reaches the desired pressure, I shut off the valves and remove the hose. I screw hose caps on both trains because they will leak. Number two, should we leave the valve open or closed feeding the PRV? This has been debated for generations. Even the manufacturers of fill valves disagree. The Watts installation instructions for the model 1156F states, the valve must always be kept open when the system is in operation. Meanwhile, Bell & Gossett's instruction manual V55999 says, the shutoff valve installed on the reducing valve inlet must be kept closed except during initial system fill or when manually adding water to the system because of a loss of pressure. This will prevent water from being added to an overheated boiler. Here is what I do. Theoretically, the system should never need water if there are no leaks, but pipes leak. I leave the inlet valve to the reducing valve open 
if the boiler has a working low water cutoff. In this way, the boiler will shut off if the water is low and does not overheat. If the boiler doesn't have a low water cutoff, I close the valve and urge the owner to get one, explaining the low water cutoff is crucial for safe boiler operation. Always install backflow preventer. These are crucial to prevent dirty water inside the boiler from backfeeding into the potable drinking water. Number four, I like installing a bypass pipe around the PRV on commercial systems to allow the system to fill quickly. The fast flow handles on some PRVs may still take a long time to fill a commercial system. When installing the bypass pipe, be sure the connections are downstream of the backflow preventer. A boiler inspector made us redo the piping when the bypass pipe bypassed the backflow preventer. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more advice and tips. Thanks for watching. If you would like to contact me, my contact information is here. In addition, I have two websites. Brewingwithsteam.com focuses on steam systems for breweries and distilleries. It includes a monthly blog about steam issues inside a brewery. My other site is FireIceHeat.com. It's my company's website and shows some of our capabilities. My boiler books are available on Amazon. My technical articles are included in these industry publications. Thanks for stopping by Boiler Room Detective and I'll see you on the next case.